In Final Cut 7, we can synchronize, we could synchronize up to 128 cameras. But of those 128 cameras, we could only view up to 16 at a time. In Final Cut 10, we can view and synchronize 64 cameras. Those 64 cameras can have different frame rates, can have different codecs, can have different frame sizes, can be audio only, can be video only, can use different codecs, can even include still images, and you can build them all into a single multicam clip. The multicam clip will play back provided you have sufficient transfer speeds between your hard disk and your computer. That's still a gating factor. But it will play back with us able to watch banks of 16 images at a time. If you remember, Michael, a year ago, the Glee folks were here, and they did the, the editing workflow of Glee. When Glee shoots, if I remember correctly, when Glee shoots one of their musical numbers, they shoot it with nine cameras, and they do four takes, and they're editing a 36 camera multicam dance number. First, the mind boggles. Second, that barely achieves half of the potential that's available to us with multicam inside Final Cut 10. So let me put something simple together. I, uh, I, I wanted to bring the, uh, the 64 camera shoot that I did, but... <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Somehow... I can only dream. The most, you know, I was thinking, I did a lot of live directing back before the days of color, and uh, <laughs> the, most, the most live cameras I ever worked with when I had like a $5 million remote truck to work in was like nine cameras. And, and shoot, I wouldn't even wake up for a nine camera multi-cam thing right now. All right, so let us, um, let me clean some garbage out here. All right, I have three multi-cam shots, shoots. This was done for my podcast called Two Real Guys, and we decided to do a scene where we changed the color to see if we could tell stories with color. I decided to pick the happy scene because the sad scene is all green and depressed, and it just wasn't. It worked great for the, but this is much, much nicer. So we've got a wide shot. Turn skimming on. Oh, by the way, something else that's new. If we go to... Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, Okay, a new thing is called clip skimming. So we have skimming and we have clip skimming. I just found this yesterday. I have no idea what it does. But it's really cool, it's got a keyboard shortcut associated with it, and so when I go home tonight, I'm going to figure out what clip skimming does and turn it into a 7,500 word article and write about it. Anyway, coming up. <clears throat> this is the Andrew shot. This is the Danielle and Lisa shot. And this is a wide shot, okay? We can synchronize based upon matching time code. We can synchronize based upon the start of every one of these clips. We can synchronize based upon audio waveforms. We can synchronize based upon a common marker. We can synchronize based upon the camera date and time. Audio synchronization works similar to the way that Pluralize does. In a, it, as long as you've got audio on all of your cameras, you can sync them. But it takes a while, unlike, and even in Pluralize, it takes a bit of time, and in Final Cut, it does as well. I found that it's easiest to synchronize if I don't have jam sync time code going to all my cameras, and I rarely do these days, then I'm going to have a clapper slate. And so what I have done is I have set a marker that indicates the clapper slate on each of these. So I've preset that just to save us some time because we don't need to see how to set a marker. Keyboard shortcut is the letter M on a clapper slate. We now select the clips that we want to build into a multicam. We go up to clip, no, nope, we don't either. We go to file, and we go down to multicam clip. It opens up a window that says, what are you going to call this? I'm going to call this L-A-F-C-P-U-G multicam. Wow, spelled it right. Now, we could leave all this exactly as it is, and you're going to screw yourself up. So here's the workaround. Make sure that angle synchronization is not set to automatic. When angle synchronization is set to automatic, it syncs based upon audio waveforms. I could set it to time code, content creation date, 
the start of the clips, but I want to set it to what's the fastest, the easiest, and it's the most common way all of us work with syncing clips today is a marker on a clapper slate. So I'm going to set it to first marker on the angle. Turn off, use audio for synchronization, because otherwise it's going to try to synchronize on audio waveforms. We could, if we want to, change the starting time code, the video properties, I like having it set based on common, et cetera, et cetera. The one gotcha is <clears throat> don't use default settings for audio. Default settings for audio defaults to surround. I don't edit surround. I edit stereo. It would be useful if we had a preference setting for that, but we don't. Click on custom and change the audio from surround to stereo. The rest of these settings, render format, ProRes 422 is a good choice. Don't worry about it. It works great. Leave it alone. Don't obsess over this and click OK. The multicam is now created virtually instantly. That little quad split in the corner, that's the icon for a multicam clip. We now have a couple of options. We could find the beginning of the multicam clip just as we can inside Final Cut 7, and we would set an in. Keyboard shortcut is the letter I. We find the end of the multicam clip. They did two takes here, and we set an out, and we edit that down to the timeline. I've now edited my multicam clip down to the timeline, except I only see Andrew. I would like to see the other shots, and they're missing because we only have one monitor that shows us this. What we need is a second monitor, and it's here. You just got to go up to window and go and say show angle viewer. And now we have our monitor. Let's just make this smaller here. Make it smaller. <laughs> Michael, I need, a, I, I need a screen that doesn't have to have 1,200 resolution. There we go. I can look at two angles. I can look at two rows of two. I can look at three rows of three. I can look at four rows of four. Does that not sound very familiar to those of you that have done multicam and Final Cut 7? It's exactly the same. I'm going to just look at this as four angles. I've got my Andrew shot. I've got my Lisa shot. i got my wide shot. If I click on Lisa or click on the wide shot, notice that it's changing the angle in my viewer. And notice these three icons up here. When I click on the left-hand icon, this means that I'm editing audio and video. This means I'm editing video only. This means I'm editing audio only. Remember when we had to go up in Final Cut 7 and we had to remember the rubric that whichever we select last is what we switch and we have to set the audio first because we want to switch the video and I had more students taking more arcane notes trying to remember this. It was just life-threatening. Audio and video. Video, audio, and, uh, video only or audio only. So I'm going to just edit this video only. So I've clicked on the middle one. Hit the home key. Hit the space bar. I'm playing. This is for you. Done. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every music video you guys have ever seen. What do you want? <clears throat> Now, a couple things to keep in mind. This works exactly the same as Multicam does in Final Cut 7 in that you're able to click on the picture and it automatically creates an edit point at that moment in time and switches the downstream shot to whatever you clicked on. If, on the other hand, you want to use the keyboard, here there's a change. If I hit the space bar and type numbers on the keyboard, I'm just typing 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Remember that in Final Cut 7, in order for us to both force an edit point and change the shot, we needed to hold the command key down. Here, we just simply type the number, where this is number 1, number 2, or number 3. So the operation of this so far is exactly the same as the operation of multicam inside Final Cut 7, except it's faster, it's more flexible, it supports, excuse me, supports more cameras. But now, let's open this up and start to really start to play. We can, by the way, not only can we, can we edit this, but if we zoom in down here, we can select our trimming tool, letter T, find an edit point. We can roll our shots back and forth. So in case, for some bizarre reason, we actually screwed up the take that we were doing, not a problem. 
we can roll that and change the timing, et cetera, et cetera. So all that stuff is still true. But I'd like to be able to see the components of this multicam. If I double click the multicam, it opens what's called the multicam viewer. Now I am seeing the source elements in my multicam clip. There's all three shots. As I look at these three shots, I realize that it would make more sense if my wide shot was up here. So I grab the thumb, drag the wide shot up, change the stacking order of my multicam, and I just change the order of my shots. Now in Final Cut 7, we held the command key down and drag the tiles around. Here, I simply click, hold, and drag the thumb inside. You double click the multicam to open it up, click the thumb to move it around. Another thing that we want to do is I want to apply a filter. Let's say I want to have this be black and white for some ridiculous reason. So I'll go to here, go to um, all, and let's just apply a 50s TV filter to it. And I've now gone to a black and white. Not only is it black and white here, it's black and white in my multicam edit. Even though I've already cut the multicam, every edited shot has now had that filter applied to it. If you've ever found yourself having to color correct a multicam shot after the stupid thing has been edited to the stupid timeline and now you suddenly realize you've got to spend a stupid week fixing this stupid problem, we just have to color correct one shot and it's done. Another thing that we can do, we can add a clip to the multicam after it's been edited by simply dragging it, I, if I had one I'd add it, but uh, to drag it down from the event browser into the multicam and we can add the clip. So everything that you want a multicam to do, we can add filters after the fact, we can change shots after the fact, we can change the stacking order, we can have it include stills. I've got a, an audio track, I get the audio track from the record company. I can have that audio track get in here, stripe that in, edit the video on top of it, put a still graphic, I can do a still montage as a multi-track sequence. Brews coffee, slices bread, very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. And all that's in the 10.3 release. Can you expand the I'm sorry, I can't hear. Can you expand the bullet right from the top to the edit? Top of the track, can you expand the bullet from the edit? No. N in other words, can you explode it up and see the tracks? No, you can't. Well, let me make sure of that. I don't want to lie to you. No. I don't have any. If they can, nobody's ever showed that to me. And I would, I would be stunned to have that feature because Apple would have showed that to me when they were giving me some information on this. I think, uh, one second, I'm going to go to questions because otherwise Michael's going to pop a gut over here. It gets back to what I talked about at the beginning. Apple, if you, if you think about what Apple has done with Final Cut 10, I think Apple badly, and we won't go down this road much, but Apple badly screwed up the launch of Final Cut 10. What's happened, what's happened is, is that when they screwed up the launch, and we can, and I do, and I have disagreed with Apple on how the launch was done, that we, we immediately put a lot of negative feelings on Final Cut 10 that may not necessarily have been there. Now, I'm not saying Final Cut 10's perfect, because God knows it isn't, that there's still stuff it needs to do that it doesn't. But we spent so much time hating Apple for how they screwed up Final Cut 7 and killed Final Cut Server and killed all these other applications where they didn't have to do that that we put a lot of burden on Final Cut 10. If Final Cut 7 had lived, it didn't, but if it had, and was running in parallel with Final Cut 10, a lot of us would say, this is a really cool tool. It does a lot of really nice things that Final Cut 7 never needed to do. But a lot of us are still working through the pain of having Final Cut 7 go away, and that pain is real, and there's a lot of real anger, and I'm not minimizing that in the least. But what I do suggest is think about what your needs are. If you're working mostly tapeless and you're outputting to files and you're working in a variety of different formats and speed is really important and high, and a high quality and support for a variety of different image sizes is important and support for uh, and, and the, the idea of background rendering taking time off your shoulders, you're going to find that Final Cut 10 is an amazing program. I'm not saying it's the equivalent of Final Cut 7. That's a battle that nobody can win. But ask yourself, are there features here that are a benefit to me? 
can I, A, make money, B, save time, improve my way of life by working with this application? In which case, if the answer is yes, then you need to look at it. And if the answer is no, then equally, you need to look at other opportunities. I'm simply suggesting there's some very cool things here and worth looking at.